Welcome to the USA, where beauty and smiling faces set the stage for your educational experience of a lifetime. We are Educatious, and we are your contact for anything while you are here in the USA. In the upcoming months, you'll discover a vibrant lifestyle of unique urban culture to down south rural hospitality. From the beaches of Florida to the beaches of California, and everything in between, such as Boston, New York City, the Rocky Mountains, and the Ozarks, the USA offers a little something for everyone. Today we will talk about how to behave in living with your host family, your coordinator, American food, program rules, attending school in the USA, computer and cell phone use, what happens if you become sick, traveling rules, culture shock, and much more. My job is to support you and your host family while you're here in the United States. I must have your updated cell phone and email address please provide that to me as soon as possible. If I contact you, you must respond to me by phone or email right away. You should always have my cell phone number and email address on you in case of an emergency. I am here for you. I am here to ensure that you have a positive experience while here in the United States. If you are having a difficult time, please let me know. It is better to deal with the situation while it's small before it gets too big. I love to hear great things that are going on in your life too, so please share those with me when we speak. If you have an emergency and you need to speak to someone and you cannot reach me, please call the emergency phone number that's located on your identification card. The least expensive way to talk to your parents back home is by Skype. You can set up a free account online, but remember, talking to everyone at home can take away from your experience in the U.S., so keep your conversations brief. Let's talk about computers. Every host family has their own rules about computer use. For example, how long you can be online, what times you can use a computer, and which websites you can visit. Remember, some websites in the U.S. are illegal, so be careful about what you search online. And talk to your host family about their computer rules. You may think Americans only eat fast food, right? Well, don't worry, that's not true. So give our food a try. Food is part of the American experience, so don't be afraid to try something new. It is also one of the biggest cultural differences between your home country and here in the USA, so you will have to learn to adapt to your host family's customs. You have the option of buying your lunch at school or preparing one from home and bringing it to school. But remember, if you are going to buy your lunch at school, you have to pay for it yourself. Most likely you have made arrangements with your parents regarding money. Once you arrive in the USA, you should go to a bank such as this one and open a bank account. It is recommended that you get a bank card so that your parents can send you money. But remember, don't ever give out your PIN number. Every host family is different. Be sure not to compare your host family to someone else's. It's important to show appreciation towards your host family. Remember, you are now a part of their family, not a guest in their home. Every host family will have their own set of guidelines, expectations, and family rules. What are chores? Chores are unpleasant but necessary tasks that need to be completed. Some chores that your host family may ask you to do are keeping your room tidy, cleaning up the bathroom that you use, helping with the dishes after meals, taking out the trash, and doing your own laundry. These are all reasonable chores that your host family may ask you to do. So what time does your host family make you come home on Friday nights? My curfew is 8 p.m. on weekdays and 10 p.m. on the weekends. Really? Back in Venezuela, my parents let me stay out in the club until 3 a.m. Yes, in Taiwan, my parents also allow me to come home really late too. But we are in America, we need to respect our new family rules. I don't like to come home earlier here because I can spend time with my new family, getting to know them. Communicating in a new language can contribute to cultural shock. Here are some activities that you can take part in to avoid being homesick. You can spend time with your host family, go out with new friends, walk around the city, join a club, or develop a new hobby. But the important thing to remember is not to remain in constant contact with your friends and family back home 
because that will just make your homesickness worse. Hi everyone, my name is Henry Wang. I'm from Chengdu, China. Hey, my name is Stephanie and I'm from Brazil. My name is Tom and I'm from Germany. After school, I always want to join some club like chess club or math club, uh, some working with uh, uh, people from United States or other foreign friends. And uh, during the weekend, I always want to go to the Chinatown, eat some very great Chinese food. I'm living in an Italian host family and I share my room with a German roommate that's made in high school here in the United States too. Uh, in the weekends, we like to go to the park, we went to Rockport, we went to yard sales, uh, shopping at outlets, and we have really, really good time together. I'm living in the same host family as Stephanie and we have two little brothers, three and five years old. It's nice to have them every time at home because in Germany I have two little brothers too. I really like to care about them. I try to keep myself busy and interacting with other people. Sometimes when I feel homesick, I Skype with my family. In the end I can say to everyone, go to America and do this foreign year. It's amazing, I'm, I have so many new experiences and every single minute is a present and I'm enjoying it. Remember, don't be late to your classes. If you have any questions about your homework or assignments, ask your teachers, they are there to help. Also remember to obey all the school rules. This means respecting your peers and your teachers, being on time, and behaving properly in class. Remember, you must go to all your classes and do all your schoolwork. In the USA, homework and schoolwork are graded with letters, and you must maintain a C average. If you are sick, your host family can excuse you from school, but this cannot happen a lot, and you must get a note from the doctor. Once you get your login for the school website, give that information to your coordinator. That way we can send your grades to your parents and they can see how great you're doing in school. You must follow your host family rules as well as the program rules while you are here in the USA. Remember, it is illegal to purchase or to consume alcohol under the age of 21. It is illegal to purchase or consume tobacco under the age of 18. Drugs are illegal and should not be used while you are here. Sex is not allowed on the program. It is not suggested that you get involved with a boyfriend or a girlfriend because this can limit your experience and it will be very difficult when you both have to go home. Driving in the USA is not allowed. You may be able to get your driver's license, but the only person you are allowed to drive with is a certified driving instructor at a certified driving school. The requirements vary from state to state, so check with the driving school in your area to find out what the specific requirements are. You are not allowed to work while you are here in the U.S. If your host family wants to pay you for babysitting your little host brother or host sister, that's fine, but you are not allowed to get a job at a place like this. Being in the U.S., you will want to travel a lot of the top tour sites. However, if you will be traveling without your host family, you will need to submit a travel form for approval. It must be signed by your host family, the school, and your natural parents if you will be missing any school days. If you get in trouble, you will receive a verbal warning. On your second offense, you will receive a written statement that you, your coordinator, and your natural parents have to sign. If the situation becomes more serious, you risk being sent home. Let's talk about public transportation. Depending on where you are in the country, you may walk, bike, your host family may drive you, or you may take public transit. If you take the subway, make sure you know how the system works, where you're going, and how to get there. You can talk to your host family or your local coordinator to go over all of this. Some of you may or may have not seen a school bus before. Some of them are long and yellow, and others look like this. It's important to follow the rules of the school bus, otherwise you may be kicked off. And if you do get kicked off, don't expect your host family to drive you to school. You will have to find another means of transportation, such as walking or taking a taxi. If you get sick or injured, you have medical insurance to help cover the cost of receiving care. It is $50 to go to the doctors or to the urgent care, and $250 to go to the hospital. As you can see, it is very expensive, so make sure you only go to the hospital if it is an emergency. Be sure you know what is covered under your insurance. For example, extreme sports such as rock climbing and bungee jumping are not included. 
You can also visit the website caremedassistance.com to find doctors, urgent care, and hospitals. You may want to continue your education next year to finish high school or go on to college. There is a form that you will need to complete to take care of all of this. There are two tests that American universities require, the TOEFL and the SAT. Talk to your coordinator to find out more information about this. Remember to make friends, get involved in school activities, and to have fun. On behalf of Educatius, I wish you a year of excitement and lifelong memories. Remember, be yourself, don't be afraid, and take chances. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the USA. USA! Welcome to the United States.